Hello, Rob from AMR Physio. Today we are getting into what is the best exercise for low back pain and why is there so many conflicting messages about what you should or shouldn't do when it comes to this topic. Some will be telling you don't move the back in certain directions like don't be bending forward or flexing. Others will tell you to be doing yoga, that's the best for back pain and that's going into all extremes of movement. So what's the right answer? We've just had a video recently where we've done a follow along video, which is a range of different movements that you can do which help with back pain. And then there's been an ad on it before saying, don't do certain exercise movements. And then we're telling you to do certain exercise movements. I mean, Jesus, how confusing is that for people? So what's actually happening here? Well, in today's video, we're gonna try and explain why there is such a conflicting message sometimes. But we're also gonna look at a recent Cochrane review that's come out. It's one of the biggest ever research reviews to be done. It's taken about eight years to complete and it's included 249 different papers trying to answer the question if exercise is effective and then also doing an analysis to see what is the best type of exercise for back pain. And these Cochrane reviews are almost seen as like the gold standard of reviews. So this is a really good one to look into. But first off, what is it with this conflicting advice? And to clarify, we are talking about back pain on its own here. So we're not talking about sciatica and symptoms where you get it in the legs and nerve pain, just pain associated to the back. So as with any profession, there are camps as to what the best approach is. Just like in the diet world, you'll have people that would advocate for a ketogenic diet and say that it's all about the hormones that contribute to weight loss and weight gain. And then you've got the other side that will say, no, it's all about the calories and what macros you have. That's what will contribute to weight loss and weight gain. And there'll be a conflict between the two. And this profession is no different. There are several camps. We're gonna try and just split it into two to make it a bit more simple as to where this divide comes from. So first off, you have the camp that relies much more on mechanics and how the body is moving. And this is heavily impacted by the work of Dr. Stuart McGill. He touted very much as a back specialist and one of the godfathers really of a lot of the advice you'll hear around back pain today. From this side, it would be very much against particular movements, saying that certain movements will make back pain worse, such as bending or flexing forward. So exercises like the knee hugs, the child poses, those kind of ones are a definite no in this camp. Because the idea is that this will actually worsen the back pain, not improve it. Then you've got the second camp, and this starts to move away from mechanics a lot. This focuses on the wider view. So a lot of time it's much more what we call the biopsychosocial view. So the biological, which is what the mechanics is, but then also the psychological and the social aspects, which might contribute towards pain as well. And this is stemming a lot from the Noi group in Australia with Lorimer Mosley and David Butler, and also people like Peter O'Sullivan. And the take from this side is that movements shouldn't be avoided, but should be explored to help people get back to normal function. And one of the big problems they have with the advice from the other camp is this avoidance of certain movements, because this avoidance can then end up leading to a fear of certain movements. And this fear of movements is called kinesiophobia. And a lot of the time, that kinesiophobia can actually drive people to then have pain for a longer period of time. And the worst thing to do is to try and completely avoid certain movement patterns. And this is getting much more into the psychological side and how that can affect and drive pain. It's also the idea from this camp that pain might not always be biological or structural in nature. Just like when you've got a headache, it doesn't mean that you've got brain damage. It might be the same for back pain. It doesn't mean you've actually damaged the back. It may just be more common in some people for many different reasons. So this is why it can seem so confusing and can get so many mixed messages about what is the right way to go with it. Most of the research at the minute appears to be pointing more towards the second camp. But the things with research is we always need more of it. And you will always have some people advising against the common narrative because it will get a bit more attention especially if that's on ads and they're trying to sell something. There's a therapist, Greg Lehman, and he makes a great point. This is not a place for strong opinions. And that's likely right. I'm sure in years to come, we will look back and wonder why we ever believe certain treatments would work as we get better and better knowledge. Just like as we look back now and we can't believe that people didn't wash their hands before doing surgery and they were wondering why people were dying of infection, because they didn't know about germs. Maybe there's something more to be discovered that will make more sense to us in time. So at this point with the latest research, what is the best exercise? So this Cochrane review done by Jill Hayden that we mentioned, 
tries to answer this question. It focuses more on chronic pain, which is where you've got pain for more than three months, rather than acute, which is less than that. It did show that exercise is better than doing nothing or normal care that you'd get from a doctor, which we already knew, but it's good that that's been confirmed. It's pretty widely accepted now that the worst thing for back pain is bed rest. There might be times that the back pain is so severe, you can't get out of bed and you can't physically move, but it's just trying to do what movements you can, even when in bed or at that stage, and getting up as soon as possible. With the study including so many papers, they were able to compare different types of exercises as well to see if there was one which was a bit better than some of the others. Generally though, all exercise does seem to be pretty effective for it, but there are some which are a bit better and some which are a bit worse. So it seems that something like Pilates edged out overall compared to some of the others. But between several exercises, there isn't a statistically significant difference between them. It does seem that several types are better than stretching or just general aerobic exercise. It also seems that a standardized program, which is just generic, is just as good as an individualized program specific to a person. It also showed that doing exercise in a group setting looks to be a bit better as well. So it's seeming that doing a general Pilates class with a group of people seems to be a really good way to go. However, there is one thing that is the most important when it comes down to selecting what exercise to pick for being effective in treating low back pain, and that is compliance. So the best exercise for low back pain appears to be the one that you enjoy the most and are most likely to stick to. So a Pilates class that you don't like and never go to is not gonna be a very good exercise choice for treating your low back pain. Whereas if you really enjoy lifting weights, doing that would actually serve you much better. But if you hate doing that, then that's not the right choice for you either. So it's really finding what is it that works best for you. There's nothing really in the review that's recommending avoiding any types of exercise or movement. That really likely comes down to the individuals. So no one can really say as a blanket term for everyone with low back pain to avoid a particular type of movement. However, if you do find a particular movement is painful, it just means going more into a range that's tolerable. Trying to get as much movement and range in all planes that you can, whether that's chronic pain or acute pain, is the best way to go but don't force into movements. If the pain is high enough that it's making you grimace, that's going too far, but it doesn't mean to avoid that movement. Just go to the range you can with the idea to gradually improve and increase it. I hope this was useful for you. Please do help us out and subscribe, and we will catch you on the next one.